And now the next item on the agenda is public comments. And this is for items that aren't on the agenda. The reason we bring these up is uh, sometimes someone will come up and bring up something uh, that we'll look into from that point on, or they'll highlight something in the community that we, want, they, we they think would be appropriate for us to know about. So I'll go ahead and open up the public uh, comment section for the items not on the agenda. Anybody here to speak on that? No mad rush to the microphone, so I'll go ahead and close the, close the public comment on item two, and I bring us up to the approval of minutes from the meeting of February 28th, planning commission. I have no change. I didn't see anything either. No, nothing? All right, got a motion and a second. All right, motion second, motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, none. All right, so that passes. Uh, unanimously, and now we will go for the public hearings uh, element. And let me just uh, go over how we approach this. Um, we, we start off uh, with an uh, update from the staff, and the staff gets us an overview. Then if there are any questions of staff, the staff comments, the, the board will, the commission will ask questions of staff. Then we'll open up for public comments. We'll start with the applicant themselves, and then uh, anyone else who likes to speak on the item. Then we'll close the public uh, uh, comment section and bring it back to the commission for discussion and action is appropriate. And we'll do that on every item. If anyone who comes in, I'll go through this one more where you can all explain it to them uh, when they come in. All right, so we'll go ahead and then we'll start with item um, item 4A, the heritage tree removal permit at 28 Selby Lane. Staff report, please. Thank you. So the request before you tonight is for a heritage tree removal permit to remove one heritage cedar tree that's about 26 and a half inches in diameter. It's located just outside the main building area for the property. A little bit of overview of the property itself. The property does have permitted plans and is under construction for an approved single family home. Detached garage on the right side of the property, opposite the side of where the proposed tree to be removed is located as well as a, a pool house or cabana in, in the rear right as well. Um, the lot itself, um, you can stop there, thank you. Um, this diagram up here shows the lot configuration on the right of the screen is the front of the property. Uh, you can um, see that the lot is elongated in shape so it's over two times as deep as it is wide. Um, it is more narrow than what a new lot that would be created under the subdivision standards would call for. Um, the basis for the tree removal based on the materials that were submitted as part of the application uh, was for a, well, first of all, for a design preference to have two garages that flanked evenly on both sides of the detached, or, excuse me, of the main residence detached garages. You can see, um, from the, from the plan there on the screen, the house being there smack dab in the middle and the outline of two L-shaped buildings that are symmetrical, both in their positioning and their shape. So again, the one garage on the right-hand side has been approved, the one there on the left has not yet been approved as it, its approval would be contingent on this tree to be removed. That tree could not be preserved based on the opinion of our town arborist as well as the project arborist if that garage were to be constructed as it is proposed, as it is proposed in its situation as well. Um, the project architect has uh, put forth comment on alternatives that have been considered um, given the narrowness of the lot. Um, they, again, preferring to have that design approach as it is shown there, um, up there on the screen. Um, the project arborist report related to an assessment of this tree, notes the tree in fair condition. The arborist report does not provide any opinion or detail um, beyond a determination that that tree is in fair health. The project applicant request, however, does um, surmise that the tree itself, there you can kind of see it in the bottom left-hand corner of the, sc uh, of the screen as it is very tall and a singular tree by itself with some lean would be more vulnerable to fail. That opinion is not stated in the Project Arborist Report. Um, Town Arborist, of course, has peer reviewed the Project Arborist Report, visited the site um, prior to the application being submitted tonight. 
Um, and jumping back even further, prior to all of the physical improvements on the site that have already been approved, the project arborist, or excuse me, town arborist, did go out to the site and was able to approve the removal of 11 other heritage trees that were determined to be dead or dangerous before the site development um, structures were approved. She does not find that this single leader tree um, to present a significant safety concern. She finds that tree to be in moderate condition uh, for those reasons, is not recommending that the tree be removed. Um, an additional piece to highlight as part of the project application request, while cedar trees are native to the town, the project applicant is proposing, if the commission were to approve that tree removal, to have a replanting plan of three, or excuse me, two 36 inch coast live oak trees and one 36 inch camphor tree. The oak and the camphor type species are shown there up on the screen on the bottom right. Okay. <coughs> um, so for the reasons, as I previously stated, given the pro uh, town arborist professional opinion, her assessment of the tree, of the site, um, as well as the fact that there is alternative locations available for an accessory building to be constructed on the site, albeit not within the programmed approach. Um, that the, this particular property is desiring to take. Alternatives are available that would not impact um, this tree nor additional trees and still allow for the construction of an accessory structure. Or so, a, a use as a garage. As a use of a garage, correct. Okay. Uh, so for those reasons, staff is recommending that the commission deny the removal of the requested uh, cedar heritage tree before you tonight. Okay, any questions of staff? One, um, one other note, just uh, typographical, it, both in the conclusion and in the alternative formal motion of the report, references an oak tree and that should reference cedar tree. All right. All right, I'll go ahead. No questions of staff, and we'll go ahead and open the public hearing. We'll hear from the applicant first for their representative. Good afternoon, my name is John Merton. I'm with Studio Green, we're landscape architects. We've been helping um, the client develop this project and uh, thank you for the very thorough report. Um, the, the owner is here and also the architect, um, uh, Scott Stockler, who will speak a little bit after I do. Um, so the um, incense cedar, Calicedrus decurrence, while it's native to California, this isn't the typical habitat for this particular tree. It's, a, it's native more to the mountainous regions of California up to Oregon. Um, and, um, and usually it's grown in, in groves and in uh, slope conditions, um, you know, like in Yosemite and places like that. So while they do exist here and there, and they have been planted because they, um, they perform pretty well, um, it's really not its natural habitat. Unlike, for example, the oak tree, which is actually very suited, and um, w I think we would have been more excited about that particular tree at the beginning of the project if it had been more of a you know, well-structured, stately oak tree. Probably would have worked around it and we would have embraced it. But in this case, as a singular tree, in fact, we didn't really give it a lot of thought as something valuable <coughs> until it came up that um, it, it should needed to be protected and it was a heritage tree. I, I, I have a couple of maps, I don't know if you're interested, but actually the distribution of this particular tree got California, if you're interested. Um, then um, in terms of studying keeping the tree, uh, the one thing is that when you add the, the tree protection zone, um, it, it's encroaching approximately 40 feet into the property and it's 140 feet wide. So it's very limiting as far as the influence of this particular tree on the narrowness of this particular lot. So it's like 28% of, of, the, of the lot is affected in width. It also forces the accessory structure to be 130 feet away from the front yard setback, or front yard property line, which is very excessive actually, and, and pretty untypical of, of many uh, homes that are developed in town. Um, so it's, 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 a, it's, it's a pretty significant burden 
for this client to um, uh, to have to to adjust the design that much for what we consider to be really a somewhat marginally appropriate tree anyway. Um, the other <coughs> issues that happen when you slide the garage accessory structure further back into the property is that the roof line of that garage structure starts to become visible from the interior living spaces of the house that's already been approved. So the living room will have views out the window you actually be looking into the roof line of the garage. We're also concerned that we wanted to create an outdoor garden space for a home office in, in this in the space and by moving the garage further back it would drive the, the parking and associated paving area further back compressing that outdoor garden space. Um, also it would be increasing the amount of square footage dedicated to car maneuvering which we felt you know we want to limit that if we can um, whenever possible because we prefer to have more landscaping and more garden space than more car space. Um, then the tree itself um, isn't a particular great example of, a, of an incense cedar. While the size does make it a heritage size, it has some thinning towards the base. It has, um, it has a distinct lane. It's a solo tree. Um, so many aspects of it just um, sort of aesthetically don't contribute to something that's um, particularly spectacular. Uh, I think you had uh, mentioned the corrections and then only on, so our, our recommendation, our, our suggestion, our hope is that you would be interested in uh, approving the alternative formal motion and that, uh, that on, and then just for correction, it's a cedar tree and the address is 28 Selby. I think it's just some language that was left over. Um, so that concludes my comments. All right, any questions? If you have any questions. And I'll allow what, what, what changed in the plan? There was an initial plan that was submitted that didn't have the garage. Is that what happened? No, no, we had the garage, we had the tree, um, but we, did, we thought that, would, that the tree would be, uh, would be approved to be removed. So we didn't, because we just didn't think that it was particularly um, valuable, um, but, but then it was determined that it, it was um, you know, reasonable to keep it. So the original plan had to block the garage in this location? Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. As in that it could be removed. Mm -hmm. Well, we, we just, I think it was our assumption, but right. obviously. Go ahead. So I was called out maybe a year ago to look at the site and they, they applied for 12 tree removals. And so since the beginning, I said this one wasn't approved for removal. However, they did still apply with the two garages, but I wasn't able to approve the two garages because I denied the, the tree. And so we asked them to take off the second garage from the plant so they could move forward with the project because they had a timeline. We didn't want to stop them from the timeline to get the second garage approved. I got it. So okay, so the project moved ahead without a second garage with the idea that there would be So that they could move along with their All right. and, and begin this process because it, it, okay. it, that wouldn't happen. That's a little bit backwards, but yeah, I got it. Go ahead. Right. If I may distribute just something right now, it's, it helps explain what I'm going to talk about real quick. Um, good afternoon, members of the commission, members of staff. For the record, I am Scott Stotler of Stotler Design Group. We're doing the architectural work. I met the other partner. I did Todd's house years ago. Um, anyway, um, sorry. Um, so uh, whenever we first looked at the property, what I've given you is an exhibit that has two pages in there. And uh, I'll give Sally one, two, okay, three. Sure. Um, what you're looking at is, um, when we first went to the site, we looked at it. The front trees that were up at the street that we've actually been able to take out, uh, there was rodents in there. They've been over, overrun. Nobody really, for years, maintained any of these trees, including this particular cedar. Uh, so when we looked at the property, one thing we noticed right away was this property is on Selby Lane, and there's a lot of traffic going through there. And as a result of trying to pick up a design that the owners wanted, they want more of a, uh, a, a nice, symmetrical, if possible, uh, would be the desire, uh, more of a contemporary style home. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to expand the width of the house such that it blocks some of the noise for the backyard of the, of the buyer, whoever's gonna live in, in the house here. And so as a result, 
We've got 39, I think, foot setbacks on the sides and on a narrow lot. It really limits the width of the house and the curb appeal. So what we had tried to do is we thought, okay, well, if we detach some garages, those garages can go 10 foot setbacks on the sides and as a result, block a lot of that noise that's coming from Selby. So that was our whole approach at the beginning of this narrow lot. The other thing that is an issue that caused part of this is the fact that to do an accessory structure, if it's in front of the house, it has a 120 foot setback from the street. So our start line of where we could even locate the garages were 120 feet back, which happens to be almost the exact location of where this cedar is. And my experience in doing projects over the years is that generally, you know, when we see an oak tree or we see mature trees, we, we want to make this like a park-like setting in the front, pick up a lot of landscape, and we're proposing to plant a lot of trees across there, including across the front. Um, so the design that we did, as a result of the garages needing to be 120 feet back, then set the house even further back, which we had to have an eight-foot separation as a result of that to, for it to qualify as a detached structure. And that's what drove all this, was that. And at the beginning, uh, Sally is correct, we met with Sally, and Sally uh, mentioned, she said, you know what, that tree is, is going to be a protected tree that she's not going to climb to let us take it out. So we knew that going forward. With the idea that we could somehow approach the Planning Commission and ask that this tree be able to be taken out and replaced with some, some nice oak trees uh, in exchange and a camphor tree, so two oaks and one camphor. Uh, what we did do, what we did try to do though, was we met with our arborist, Kevin Kilty, and we actually, even before we got the permit, just before we got the permit, we moved the house two foot further back. And the result was to try to accommodate and mitigate to be able to keep that tree. So we did that and likewise brought the garage back even a few more feet and moved it over also. So that garage on that left side, you'll notice to shift it as far to the left as we can get it and back to keep it away from that tree. And we had talked to our arborist and he felt that based on the species of that tree, and if I'm putting words in your mouth, Kevin, correct me, uh, felt that perhaps that tree could be maintained, the health would not be uh, destroyed, and, and we're building, I think it's like eight feet from that tree. But according to the TPZ rules, I think we need like 13 feet away from there based on the diameter of the tree, which created even more of an impact. So we knew that at some point we'd have to come before the Planning Commission ask this permission to take that tree out, replace it, make that big area park-like setting. If we could bring the whole house forward uh, a ways, that would have been nice. We did not have that option because of our choice of the detached garages to try to help widen the footprint of the house to mitigate the noise that's coming into the back. Mm -hmm. So that was, our, that was our premise and our approach. Uh, and we knew that if this did not get approved, we'd have to somehow redesign our garage and, and accommodate it. Problem is, you know, vehicles have to be a certain size, and for it to be a garage, it needs to have be a decent, uh, decent dimensions to make it work. And so it's going to be challenging, to say the least. And also, the reason I put an exterior in there, what I did on the landscape exhibit, was I took where the red marker and put where that tree is. You see the red marker with the circle? That's that tree. If you look at the elevation in the front of the house, that's the concept we were designing around. And we felt that we had a really good case to build because of the narrowness of the lot and the fact that the tree is not an oak tree. And my experience over the years, I've had projects, many projects, we've been successful in being able to remove a tree here and there. Now it's true that we did take out 11, let's Sally stay is correct, but those trees were not maintained, they were not in great health, and like I said, there was rodents and it was overgrown in the whole front of that street. That's all been since cleaned up. And if you look at the landscape plan, we're trying to make, as a result of the 120 foot setback, we're trying to make that whole front feel like a park. And we believe also that that tree in itself, mm. it's leaning, and, and the arborist has told us that in time, it could be an issue with the health of that tree uh, because of the lean that it's got. And it would also throw the balance of the architecture off, and I know that's really a non-issue when it comes to making decisions, I understand that, and making the findings, but I just want to at least state our premise. Okay. Thank so you. have you got any questions? Any questions? I have a question. Uh, notwithstanding the garage on the right hand side, are there any other uh, mitigations you considered for reducing the noise impact than putting the 
left hand we, side. We we are picking up a and we've got it approved the whole front masonry wall in the front of the house. But my experience is walls are probably about the only thing that mitigates noise. Trees, landscaping, we've not had a lot of success with that. And so if we can pick up the garages, I think the garages by them being taller than an eight foot fence, well or it's six foot, six foot, six foot fence, there's gonna be noise balancing over that. So those garages really have a function. They're also to may not make this 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 is a proportionally speaking, even though it's a bigger lot, when you look at the width of this lot and then the side setbacks, we don't have much of an envelope to work with. And we were gonna push the house back anyway, but we couldn't figure out where to put the garages. And so we didn't want to have a garage in the dead center of the lot. We flanked them on the sides, and that was what drove all this. Are they three car garages? They are. They are three car garages, yes. Alright, any other questions? Okay. Oh, I, I would like to make one comment. If we did do a two car garage on that left or something like that, it would have to be not two car wide, it would it's be a narrow looking garage. Right. It would definitely look odd on the on the front, in, in our opinion, uh, with the balance we've got right now. So uh, that's why I thought that exhibit might be good to look at. Okay. Thank you. Alright, thank you. <coughs> Hi, just a very Quick comment. My name is Jerome Zahavi. I'm the owner. Um, my, my only comment that we are not just identified with the whole goal of, of making things green. You can see from our plan, uh, the one that is the colored one, which is easier to see, that that's what we are doing. So this tree is really, it's not a nice tree even, if you, if you see it in life. It's tinted and, and it just stands by itself. And I think what we are proposing in line with the, the city goal of making things look like a park it will be much more successful and much nicer with what we are proposing. And if we need to plant even more trees, more than the tree to replace, we are willing to do that. But but looking at the plan, I think you, you get the feel that that's, what, that's our whole goal here with the very deep front that, that we kind of lost, but for our from our point of view, we gain because we are doing a park setting. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else to speak on the plan? There are no questions. Okay. All right. And then I'll go ahead and close the public hearing and bring it back to the commission for discussion and action of the appropriate. So this is this is the, the issue that we come up with again and again and again. Um, and, and that is the issue which is we're ordinance driven and how we can uh, decide things. Um, and uh, so this is a great architecture and, and the, the look of it's great and the concept is very, very great. So that the, the, the issue that I have to go through in my mind is the, the ordinance requires us to do certain things to certain size trees and that is to protect them. Uh, and uh, um, and so the, the variation that we get around that is something so unique about the situation other than the architecture that we would base our decision on that. So the question will be around the, you know, the sound mitigation. There's about 50 people here along the, the, trip, the railroad tracks that have sound mitigation issues. So, um, so, so the, the question will be is what's so unique about this to make this exception? I, I'm not seeing it in my mind, but I'm listening to other. Yeah, I, actually, I would, I would actually add to that too. We're seeing a staff report that says, and I, I, I'm a big one on preserving trees, and in this case, like you said, it's ordinance driven, so it is what it is. But when our own town archivist <coughs> says that she, she does not recommend removing this tree, and we've spent countless hours and hours and hours and hours and hours on heritage trees. That becomes my too. Yeah, that's, you're coming in also when there's been more and more discussion around this. We probably, we probably got about you know, at least eight sessions that I can think of around the regulations around tree, tree uh, preservation and, and the criteria for tree removal. And of all the criteria that uh, that is a fact that is determined to be not a factor, it's architecture, unfortunately. Well, I guess what, what surprises me too is that the a design would be done on this knowing that the tree was an issue and that then coming back later on to, to try to get the tree removed when it was already pretty 
self-aware at the time that that was an issue. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that was, that was, I guess that was part of the risk. Go ahead. So we're still trying to decide that, it, but it would most likely be eight times to ten times. So there's currently a, a wire fence going on. It should be protected on site right now, yeah, because they are digging, I think, for the basement so currently. As yesterday when I went out to the property, yeah. there was a wire fence that right. did not look um, like it would meet the TEZ standards. Right. Okay, so I can take a look at that tomorrow. There's a backhoe right there. We're just ready to rip it out. <laughs> exactly. That looked like it's ready to take that tree out. Yeah. Yeah. That's the tree well, depending on your decision tonight, I will go out there tomorrow and talk to the contractor. The tree is sitting there shaking, going, please yeah. let me <laughs> So, I, 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 yeah. yeah. I have a comment. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I hear everybody up here struggling with the ordinance as it's written. Uh, however, I think that all the speakers tonight, starting with Mr. Martin, are uh, very persuasive. And one thing that he has pointed out that hasn't been mentioned yet is that the former house, which I see is now gone, right. like in these pictures, was, uh, was just 10 feet right. from the trunk of that tree, which is well within the protection zone. And around town here, we've all had experiences with uh, trees being affected by the building of a wall or a building or whatever, and within the next couple of years, they decline and die. And that would be a terrific shame if these people were forced to work around this tree, which I agree is unattractive uh, to maintain it. Um, secondly, according to John McClenahan, who is a well-known arborist in this area, uh, he says, quote, arborists cannot detect every condition that could lead to a tree's failure. To live near a tree is to accept a degree of risk. And many of us in this room can cite examples of that. Uh, also, besides those two factors, the owners have uh, offered to replace this tree with two or three much more attractive trees, albeit young, uh, two coast live oaks and a camper, as has been mentioned. And Sally, our arborist, has said that uh, in a memo to us that this offer exceeds the replanting requirement and is sufficient if the commission decides to approve the removal of the, ce of the uh, cedar tree. So uh, all those things uh, are influencing my decision, as you can tell. And lastly, though, there is a matter of property rights, which I think is compelling. And the fact that this tree is unattractive, it may be troublesome, uh, not to mention the possible dangers as its health continues to deteriorate. Um, I believe we must, re we must uh, approve the request to take the tree out. That's just my opinion. Uh, and, because, and that you're basing that criteria on the health of the tree? <coughs> Largely, along with all the other well, the only problems one, the only, they have. The only, the, one, the only one that's relevant to the ordinance would be the health of the tree. Okay, the health of the tree, of course, I've mentioned that primarily from the standpoint that it's already been, perhaps its roots have been injured because of the proximity to where the uh, demolition occurred. And uh, so are you, are you finding any with the health of the tree? As it stands right now, it's neither dead or dangerous. And at my level, that's what I decided, the tree is dead or dangerous. And it, I don't feel this tree, even though people are saying it's ugly, it's a protected tree because all species of trees are protected for our town ordinance. Um, and I just didn't feel this was a tree that I felt was dangerous. They're currently building at what we would consider what architects have been doing, uh, the distance that we've been doing before so I'm not concerned about the roots being cut and they already have to replace 11 36 inch boxes and 10, 22 24 inch boxes based on their other removal so and, I mean <laughs> um, well, from a staff perspective the tree is not dangerous and that's why we're here tonight right and that goes back <coughs> to the discussion we've had in the last six or seven meetings where we said know, was there a rule or not? And if there was a rule, uh, are we going to enforce it? And if we, uh, if we didn't want to enforce it, we changed the rules. So we modified the rules to make it more clear. And now this is this is a good example of one that's, I don't know, there's, it's pretty this is straightforward. A, yeah. This is so, a good example of, uh, the, these uh, have been presented more and more. So maybe it's something we can look at. If the tree is in moderate shape, I can approve it. Um, 
but yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because there is like a, the, you know, if the tree is in moderate shape, I still don't feel that the tree is dangerous, and so I, I deny it. But if we, if the commission would like me to approve trees that are even in moderate shape, then that's something we can discuss when we change the heritage tree ordinance. So that goes back to the idea that there were several trees removed because they weren't being taken care of. Right. So we have one that could be taken. So care I did of. remove any. I did approve. They approved pretty much every tree on that lot except for the oaks in the back, and. Uh, I did approve ones that I felt were dangerous or really just about to fail. and um, So I did approve trees that I felt were hazards. So the lot hazards. is very clear now compared to what it was yes. when they first started. Because I used to go out there regularly after that, that lot was, before that lot was done. All right. I have one more question yeah. for Sally. The lean of the tree has been mentioned a few times. Uh, what's your opinion on the lean of that tree? I do think it has a slight lean, but I don't. I, I feel the lean has it's been leaning like that since the beginning, and unless it was a new lean, I'm not concerned with the lean of the tree. And if they're not cutting roots around there, which they shouldn't be, except for the for the basement of the new house, then it shouldn't be a problem. It doesn't lean as much as I as as, as, as much as I've seen trees. I've got twelve <coughs> trees in my backyard that lean better than so all by a lot. to, 
exit their vehicle and have a safe path of travel to the, um, to the facility. Um, additionally, specifically in direct context to the two trees proposed for removal, which are shown up there on the screen circled in yellow, uh, is the <coughs> addition of some parallel parking spaces that will serve as a passenger loading and unloading zone that currently don't exist on the site. Um, the nature of the whole project and improvements and have physical associated improvements that I just described um, do trigger some requirements under the California Building Code for accessibility, specifically improvements that require um, the dimensions of such to meet the American with Disabilities Act or ADA compliancy. Um, I, I have reviewed this proposed plan with our building official and he did indeed certify that the open space to trigger these ADA um, accessibility type requirements. We also evaluated uh, the potential for those particularly parallel parking spaces and new sidewalk. Again, that does not exist now. Right now, there's still people walking in the parking area um, to get to the facility. That those that sidewalk could be redesigned and still comply with ADA requirements. However, um, it was evaluated that there could potentially be a greater number of trees that could be impacted while still meeting those ADA requirements. Whether you push it out further, you then reduce the drive aisle of the parking area. If you have it meander through the trees, you're, you're widening your physical foot imprint. Um, other trees that aren't shown um, on that site plan, but are probably more clearly shown in the photograph that the architect submitted tonight um, to kind of frame around the edge of the existing buildings there at Oakwood. <coughs> there are a series of policies that the commission can consider um, in evaluating the request before you tonight, which um, fall again primarily under the premise of providing site enhancements and providing accessibility under building code requirements. Um, there is an existing ordinance uh, within the municipal code that speaks specifically to accessibility. Um, while the request before you tonight is not falling under the confines of that particular ordinance, um, that ordinance allows for requests for deviation from setbacks or other development type standards to provide accessibility. I thought it was warranted to just highlight that to the commission to consider um, potentially a new decision making as an adopted town policy that's related for related improvements associated um, to accessibility in, in the context of this particular application. The plans before you tonight do not propose any replanting. Um, plan as it, state, as it states. Uh, however, it is the town arborist opinion if the commission were to approve the removal of the two trees that the standard required mitigation as within the adopted um, ordinance do be required for this request. Uh, specifically, that would entail the replanting of two native oak trees, 48 inch box in size, somewhere on, on the lot. So for those reasons, um, staff is recommending that the commission grant the heritage uh, tree removal permit <coughs> at uh, 140 Valparaiso. I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. I see the project architect is here and some other folks on behalf of the project. All right, any questions, staff? Any questions, staff? Zoe, are these, what's the condition of these trees? So one of them, uh, they're both leaning. Um, if you did take a look, you'll yeah. see that they're both leaning. One has other issues. It has some leaf blight. Um, there were some broken branches, so I approved one of them. The other one just has a lean. Um, I also, John McClenahan is actually the, the private arborist for Sacred Heart, so I work with him a lot on this site. And we both felt, felt, felt after even having conversations with him that this tree shouldn't be approved at my level because again it leans but it's not a dangerous tree. A lot of the trees are leaning there. So tree one twelve or what's um, that? That is tree one ten is the one I, I recommended for removal. One twelve 
Um, I didn't. Yeah. And then 12 is healthy. But I understand because of the ADA requirements that the trees <laughs> should be removed. <laughs> right. But at my level, the one of the trees was more dangerous, and this one was just <laughs> leaning, which I didn't feel was an issue. Along with John McClanahan, he didn't think it was a dangerous tree either. Right. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions? I just want to clarify. So you were saying that. Specifically, but accessibility. Okay. Um, the commission would need to make a basis of your finding. Uh, within the staff report, it provided a few adopted general plan policies um, within our land use element, within our open space and conservation element, as well as our housing element that could be considered in support of the specifics of this particular application. I brought forward that ancillary ordinance as another town adopted policy for you to consider um, as a basis potentially in, in making the finding. Okay. So I have, I have a question. Uh, so this, the reason we were determining 110 and 112 was because your recommendation for 110 is that it be removed. And your, and your recommendation on 112 does not include that because from an arbor standpoint. All right. Okay. Yes. So Yeah, I can't ADA. really do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the ADA is a background, it's sort of a background thing. It's not, we wouldn't base it ours, ours on that, but it would just be something, by the way, this is another uh, aspect of this situation, this unique situation. So it could be part of the uniqueness of this situation, but it could be based on that. Yeah. But can we consider it, it's kind of like a, it's secondary to the fact that uh, new parking is being built? The new parking is for the housing, yeah, and the housing yeah. is related to the accessibility right. Right. issue. So it's kind of one to right. remove, but right. it's yeah, right. related. So, it's so because of the design, mm -hmm. right. All right, let's go ahead and, and let's go ahead and, uh, and hear from the applicants. Let's go, I'm going to open the public hearing. Go, or, uh, I have to get breath. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Phil Nettle, and I'm an architect with AAI Nelson out of San Jose, and we are the architects for this project. And I have to compliment the staff report. I think it really capably outlined the reasons we are asking or making these site improvements and requesting that these two heritage trees be removed. As was stated earlier, this is a retirement community for elderly retired sisters, many of whom are over 90 years old. And our number one goal on these site improvements was to make the site safer and more convenient for the sisters. Right now it's very hazardous. They're not able to transit the project and enter the building in a safe manner. Parking is haphazard. So the whole impetus is to upgrade the site, bring it into compliance with all accessibility laws, and make it convenient for the sisters, where we don't have to worry about them uh, meeting their demise. Um, just to summarize once again the specific goals, um, Generally, we just wanted to improve the circulation on the site. It's just not very good right now. Uh, we wanted to greatly enhance the safety of the residents. And foremost and paramount from my viewpoint is bringing the project into compliance with the ADA and the California Building Code. Anytime you make an addition that's over a certain dollar figure, as an architect, I'm obligated to build, uh, to build the project uh, up to these codes. And path of travel is number one on the priority list from public way to the building. So logically, if we have street side parking, which is in demand on the campus, you know they're very short on parking. And uh, you logically have a sidewalk adjacent to uh, where your cars park. And we also have our loading zone there. So I'm also concerned about the trees leaning. And I talked to our arborist. What he really said, I, if I can summarize it, is there's no way he could say when and if these trees would ever fall. He didn't, he did not, he was not happy with them leaning, obviously, but who knows? They could be there for another hundred years. But he also commented that the front of the building is so densely planted with trees, they're crowding each other out. If you look at the photos, right, either, 
That's why we didn't propose a replacement program, but we're, we're happy to uh, do that. It's just where we put the trees. This is a heavily wooded campus. It's really a forest-like environment. And uh, however you decide, we'd be happy to do a replacement uh, program. So if you have any questions, uh, shoot. And I brought some of the sisters tonight. Uh, have any questions? They're my <laughs> gallery tonight, and we're concerned about their welfare. And, and, that, and the way I would have presented that, I would have said we have some women who live there who are all over 30. <laughs> <laughs> and they are short. <laughs> that, would be, that would be accurate, but not overly specific. <laughs> my name is Sister Patty Creighton, and I have the privilege of being the executive director for Atherton Sisters. For the sisters, it's a privilege for me to, to be there. Um, and it's amazing, you know, these sisters, the inside of the sisters, they bought this piece of property in the late 1800s. Wow. Um, 62 acres in Atherton, um, wow. in the late 1800s. So they have been on that property, like Claire, Claire, Sister Claire tells me, before the city of Atherton. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I think that it was the reason why they bought that property, because they did notice the beauty of it. It was a beautiful place to have children come and make sure the education um, was a perfect place both in what they received in education, but also for the beauty that surrounded them. And that continues till today. So the sisters that are there, so Nancy Morris has been an institution at that school, and I think that what we want to continue is to keep the beauty on that property, but also to provide safety for the sisters that are now aging in that campus. And, it, and the drop off, I tell you an example of happened last week when it was raining, uh, our, just our entrance that we enter into that building, the sister on her walker, as it was wet, and it's only a slight little slope, she started, her, her walker started to go down too quickly, yeah. and she slipped to the ground. Yeah. And so those things are gonna happen more, because we have healthy 90-year-old sisters over there, but they're gonna continue to age and more frail as time goes by. So and we are committed to continuing more beauty. We actually did not do the landscaping plan yet, um, we, because we only, we, I wanted to assure I got this budget approved, um, but we will do a landscaping plan to make sure that we um, keep the build of the property as beautiful as it, it always will be in, into the future. All right, thank you. Okay. Any questions? No, thank you for those comments. Yeah. Anyone else? All right, no one, no one else? All right, then I'm gonna go ahead and, and close the public hearing and bring it back uh, for discussion and action as appropriate. I'm happy to go. Yeah, I, so, I, so yeah. actually, I'm sorry. Go ahead. So I would normally recuse myself on something like this because I do so much work over at Sacred Heart as a parent, former parent, and, and but the, our it, sister is correct that, that, that this area was once a large, and still is a large campus, but the school portion that I do the work for is has, has its own kind of governance, if you will, and management, et cetera. But I can completely empathize with the comments and I've spent a substantial amount of time within that facility and I've always been worried not only about access, some of those trees that are in front, but also about the safety aspect that there isn't a sidewalk there. So um, I would concur with them that this is a great change, especially as, as responsible as the overall campus is for the trees and McClanahan's input, I think it's, I think it's a great opportunity here for, for this group. Even driving through when I went through on my tour, uh, I'm sitting there going like, okay, I'm not gonna look at a tree until I stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a long, narrow, like, and there's there's cars everywhere, and you know, so, and, and everybody gets to go on the whole tour too now, because it's one lane, it's one lane now. It used to be two way on when you go left, right? So now you're gonna see the whole campus on the tour, so that's the one thing about the traffic plan right now is that it, it forces you to go everywhere. Uh, so it, it's, it, is, uh, it's, it is an issue, it is definitely an issue. All right, so the only question I would th think that uh, just to, con if you're ready to make a motion just to consider is that I, I would think that we'd want to go ahead and add the idea that they, there'd be replacement uh, plantings of some kind and we could go ahead and that would be, one, that would make it consistent with the way that we normally would, uh, would process this. Two, it's a big enough property where something can be put along the edge of the campus or something else. Um,
actually did in attachment yeah, one like incorporate a recommended condition that encompasses that. Let me, let me look at condition it. number two. That's the two thirty six inch box. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the, the standard is 148 per, per each native oak. Yeah. So what, what, where did you say? 48 inch box. Mm -hmm. yeah. not, not, not 48 inch oak tree, right? <laughs> yes. That's, uh, yeah, that, I want to see that helicopter again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, so uh, you got an idea on that? Uh, well, if it's already clear in terms of condition two, then I, I don't need, I don't have a problem. Where does it say condition two in the formal motion? Uh, uh, it doesn't say it on the motion, it has it on the, the permit itself. So it would be back another page and a half. I got it, okay. And through the chair, we would amend condition two to read 48 inch box. Yes, that's what I'm looking for, mm -hmm. that word. Okay, I'm happy to make a motion, unless there's other comments. Any other comments? Right. I move that the Planning Commission find that the proposed removal of two heritage oak trees, tree 110 and tree 112, at 140 Valparaiso Avenue and Afton would not be contrary to the purpose and intent of the general plan for the reasons outlined in the staff report and that the Commission approve the tree removal subject to the conditions that are listed in the draft heritage tree removal certificate and amend the item 2 to say two 40 inch, 48 inch box oak trees. Moved and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? None. Passes unanimously. All right. Thank thank you. You. All right. That's what democracy looks like these days. <laughs> identifies the type, 
the intensity and the location of different land uses. Uh, here in Atherton, uh, we're relatively unique in that our existing general plan has three types of designated land uses, residential, public facilities, and park and open space. There are no commercial, there are no industrial, there are no um, other types of residential beyond single family. Um, the proposals before you tonight do not request to change any of those land uses. So there are no changes to any parcels as part of this process. The map shown here on the screen um, is a cleaned up uh, version of what the existing land use map shows in the general plan with um, some more detail. It color codes those three different land uses that I just mentioned with everything yellow, of course, being um, residential, everything blue being public facilities and schools. So that's all our private schools, all our public schools and the circuits, <coughs> excuse me, and the circus club. And then those green parks, excuse me, not the circus club. And then the green um, being park and open space as the Bear Gulch Reservoir located at the western end of the town, um, our town parks and the circus club. So again, none of these are changed, changed designations from what your existing general plan currently reads. Uh, what are the element updates? Um, a lot of it has to do with background language that the state of California requires land use elements to have that our current general plan is lacking. So we've provided that background data um, as required by the state. Um, secondly, there are a series of new policies and actions and those are identified within the revised element that are were included just for internal consistency within the town based on other adopted town documents and plans such as our climate action plan, our Holbrook Park master plan, uh, the civic center master plan is now addressed and incorporated in the general plan since that is indeed the largest forecasted um, project identified within the town. So pending any comments that the commission may have tonight on any of the text and or map that is included in the administrative draft uh, land use element, we would again incorporate all of those into a final administrative draft version to um, present publicly at a workshop uh, targeted for about fall later this year. So happy to answer any questions that you have. I know there's a lot of pressure uh, for communities to add, um, add housing density. Uh, and I've, I've been spending a lot of time in LA and there are actually, for all the areas that my daughter lives in, there are no garages anymore. They're all just uh, apartments in the backyard. Um, and so there's all kinds of access issues with that. And there's uh, parking is, parking is, uh, full-time job um, and so what I'm, what I'm concerned about is that we don't go down this path where well shoot there's a garage there's there's two garages there in certain properties uh, and, and we end up being sort of pushed into a density that uh, the community doesn't fit the, the community so are we still on that path uh, yes uh, so the overall policy that this land use element is intending to um, encompass is to continue to maintain the town's small rural character of predominantly single family residential. There's no policy within this element that would um, indicate or prove otherwise. I think a lot of policies that may suggest otherwise would be probably better incorporated in the housing element um, okay. piece of a general plan Good. versus a land use element. Um, we are not proposing to update the housing element as okay. part of this process since that's sort of its own, its own animal um, that has to be updated more frequently than the other elements um, based on regulations of uh, the state of California. Didn't we just do that too? Didn't we just yeah, the last RENA cycle or yeah. regional housing needs allocation yeah, um, yeah, two, so two, years year, two years ago? Yeah, two years, years at this yeah. point. Yeah. 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 Are you sure you don't want to add that to the list? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, one thing, I, one other thing I would like to note, um, we have a 
if we should have a placeholder in here for a policy related to trees. Um, depending on what, if any, amendments are ultimately certified by the town council, we would certainly want to integrate that direction appropriately in a policy um, within the land use element. So depending again on which path that, that may lead itself to, um, in future heritage tree removal applications that you may see, you may have more direct policy to help you yeah. in your decision making of heritage tree removal applications, again, whichever way that may lead itself. Okay. All right, cool. I don't have any issues with this right. at all. I thought it was great. Yeah. Well, well, like you said, it's mostly background. And we'll right. also see a, re we'll see a repeat of yeah. the yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. four months, six months, right? What's the timeline on this? Um, it's like something at the end of the year, right? Yeah, so I have the community workshop targeted in uh, October, mm -hmm. um, and then we would be we are required to prepare an environmental document when you update a general plan. That takes a little bit of time. I have that uh, about the same time in October, so you would see it again in the fall. Okay. The cumulatively, right. the next element that um, we propose to bring forward to you is the. Um, traffic and circulation element um, in May. Okay. Next month? No, almost next month. Yeah. All right. So I just have one minor question. That's on page ten, second from the bottom. Policy LU three one three dot one. Yeah. Um, requesting the private school prepare a master development plan. Yeah. Are we already doing that on an annual basis? We are. Because um, it says proposed new policy in that kind of. We're doing it. Um, but it's not part of the policy. Correct. It's part of the agreement. We'd we like to strengthen gotcha. the okay. All right. requirement. Okay. Clarify it. Thank we, you. We I, that, that should be in there then. All right. We, we did that as part of the agreement for certain development uh, aspects that they did. Although that was part of the. Yeah. Uh, well, it, it, along, it goes back even farther than ours, but. Conditional use for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then that's part of the condition. Right. Okay, that's good. It'd be part of the policy. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, any, uh, anything else on that? No more questions? Okay, then the commission report. Anything to report? I just have a question. Uh, I'm not going to push you over your 62 minutes. Right? Uh, but actually, on, on, we're in that housing element where we talked about adding the additional units, uh, the potential to add on by I call them grand units. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. how, how, has that been implemented? Has Have people been doing it? Has it, I mean, are you seeing it sporadically? Are you seeing it a lot? Because I. I don't, see, I don't feel like I see that in our neighborhood but where somebody I could tell is has their home and they're adding that on. I'm, uh, I'm just curious if that's taken yet or the architects have questions or what's happening. Um, no, there's not a lot of question. Um, so since the state mandate that recreated these accessory dwelling units and allowing by right folks to convert existing space into these what they're calling ADUs, we haven't seen a huge influx of applications. Um, there are some, um, but what we see more are new units versus the conversion of existing right. units. Mm -hmm. Whether those new units are actually being utilized as yeah. they're intended to be, yeah. um, it's hard for us to say at, because we're just at the initial plan check phases. Um, I've seen a couple of plans come through where it was designed as sort of, sort of a, uh, a, you know, a visitor unit, a like grandparent unit type thing, yeah. uh, but they were, they were a one bedroom place or one, or one bedroom one bath, or two bedroom one bath. Off the record, or on, on the record, but off side conversation, a lot of the architects tell me sometimes those spaces are intended to be used for their, their own um, project staff or property staff. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. right. Right room, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right. Great. Okay. All right. And, uh, and, and the only thing I have, I, I have is uh, to you know, probably dovetail to the staff report because uh, one of the, one of the things I've been having an issues with on this tree thing is just the, you know, we're. We're saving heritage trees that aren't always good-looking trees, mm -hmm. you know, and that's so. Like this last, the last mm -hmm. meeting we had, that tree was so borderline in my mind in terms of uh, about uh, saving it. But by the rule that we set up, and by the fact that we were trying to make it very clear that this is the rule, is putting us in this little sort of tough yeah. spot where, yeah, if I could get that, if I could get a better tree over there rather than that one right there, it'd make a lot more sense. But we don't have we don't have a leverage for that right now, other than saying, yeah, well, you know. Know, but I think this one, then we start doing this sort of architectural type planning rather than by, by rules. So 
you got an update on what happened on our last month's uh, appeal, right? Yes, okay. and, and a continuation of where that is yeah. going as an update as well. Right. So, and so, that, so officially, um, then, yeah. we're going to go over the staff report on item 7. All right, go ahead. So the heritage tree removal application at 222 Camino Alago that you considered and denied with the 3-2 vote at your last meeting was a formal appeal was submitted to the council. Um, the council did, after a, a fair amount of deliberate discussion, did decide to approve the appeal. Um, I, I do want to, first of all, highlight two things um, regarding the discussion and the information that was presented at the council meeting. Um, specifically, an updated Arborist report was submitted as part of the appeal application that was not presented to the commission. That uh, it, it didn't do any new testing. If you recall, there was some discussion what other kinds of testing can be done, and there was a, a, a drilling type test, which was um, uh, it sounded like to be quite an expensive route to take. But there were more detailed evaluations by the project Arborist prepared in an updated Arborist report that was not presented to our town Arborist, nor was it presented to the commission. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, an additional Arborist was brought on um, after, again, the materials were presented to the commission that further supported the Project Arborist enhanced report, again, that, that you didn't see. And then, um, Thirdly and lastly, uh, there is a tree, evalu tree hazard evaluation checklist. This is an industry standard form that those in the arboricultural community utilize as an, just an additional resource piece and questions to ask, some boxes to check to assess the health of a tree. That was prepared, again, not presented to the commission as part of your decision making. Um, so the council had a lot of discussion on that. Uh, they, at the end of conversation, um, there the I feel that the direction that was given was that tree preservation was was certainly not um, to be considered less or to be less significant in decision making. But because of that particular tree's information presented, that indicated a pretty relatively high risk of failure and hazard. That was the basis of their um, approval of the appeal. And it was five zero, right? It was five zero, um, but they, you know, they were concerned that there was additional information given to them that was not given mm -hmm. to you. And that was made clear. It, it was. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Very, very clear. Very clear. Not redirected to the planning right. commission to review the new information. That's what I was going to say. That was not lawful. Yeah, Most of every other city would have, would have sent it back to us right. and said, right. on the basis of new information, yes. Planning Commission needs well, to see it again. Yeah. Yeah. That was suggested that. as a possibility. They do have the right to decide it as a final matter, and they chose that option. I think also the fact that it was a 3-2 vote gave them the impression that perhaps Planning Commission was not sure about this. And At least two of them were pressured. Yeah. Well. So, well, well uh, and we, yeah. And sorry, I didn't yeah. interrupt you. I and we made it very clear to the commission, or to, excuse me, to the council, the real tough conversations that you had mm -hmm. at your February meeting. And I think some of them actually, I think, watched the meeting because they were already aware of that fact, mm -hmm. so they must have watched the video or at least reviewed the minutes. But new information is new information. If we didn't right. see it, then we right. should yeah. see it again. Yeah. Yeah. That's, That's that. Right. I think the council erred in doing that. I know they have the right to. Mm -hmm. But I think they opened the themselves up to that. Yeah. They completely opened themselves up mm -hmm. if somebody really had an issue with it. And that was, an al that was one of the uh, alternatives that were were presented to them as one of their options. They're sending it back? I yes. Wow. Yeah, I, can say I thought you had to. Well, I think they don't have to, but they may consider doing that because they may they might end up saying more basically. Right, just by saying. But the other thing is, based on, based on, if you just watch the video or or, do it, or saw the minutes or whatever on that, you would you would see that there was enough question that we had about it and we wanted more information that to send it back really would have not done anything except burn up the applicant's time yeah. and with the idea that, that we were probably going to go the other way because I certainly was on the border on that. I was, I was, I, it's been really tough for me not to do what we talked about doing, doing, uh, uh, dumb, smart things, <laughs> you know, you know, and, and I, 
feel like we're stuck in, a, uh, in this, you know, dumb, do the, do the not, not brightest thing that complies rather than the, non, the, than the brightest thing that doesn't technically comply. Right. And so that, that thing is really tough for us. Mm -hmm. And if we go down that slope, it's going to go, the staff goes nuts with it because then, then it's like a random number generator. Like when do when do we approve or when do we don't approve? That's why I was that's why I was so concerned about doing anything other than backing up the staff the mm -hmm. presentation on this first one because it there was there was nothing really that unique about the lot. There was that you know the, the tree didn't lean that much and, and so and it was it's in my mind it was it wasn't it wasn't anywhere near as pretty as some of the palm trees I see in town. But it was <laughs> by the way I got a, a mailer on my on my doorstep saying that they wanted that they would buy our palm trees for two thousand bucks if you wanted to sell them. That's right. Also, I gave you my brochure. Uh, <laughs> you need to come to us for a event for that. <laughs> That's right. I would. So on that note, um, we we have, as staff have been directed to bring forward your recommendation of amendments of the Heritage Treaty Ordinance to the council in April in a more study session format without the request for any action be taken. Um, and, and what we like to do is broaden the conversation for more of a policy discussion um, to the point that you just made. Um, we, does the town want to entertain consideration of tree removals uh, in more of a, um, I want to call it aesthetic basis, but can we, do you want to consider more mitigation um, of long-term replanting benefits perhaps based on the individual tree or not um, in development potential of a site? Uh, there is an envelope that's prescribed um, and is it by right to develop to the maximum extent of that envelope? Well, the other thing too is that there is a there is a situation where there is in many 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 lots either because they've been uh, uh, you know not built on for a while or whatever there's over planning right and right. And, and, so, and there's and there's very old trees and there's trees that are sort of like been propped up for a long like that tree last time was a tree that would have been definitely propped up over time. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're getting to the point where there are old trees that are technically heritage trees. I don't know how many heritage trees I've seen that are just like, they're so, they've been so ugly, I go like, really, this is a heritage tree? Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, so it's just one of those things where I think some something has to be done so we got just a little bit of sort of, whatever, whatever the criteria would be, there needs to be a criteria that is the wild card criteria for Something needs a little room. Yeah, we need we need. This is one area where where you know, having some clear kind of criteria around the use of the land or the use of the property relative to it, you know, would, would make would make sense to us. Now we, it's a slippery slope, and it would. Sure, I was just about to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, the thing about it is right now, if we don't. What's going to happen? It's going to be a appeal up, appeal up, appeal. It goes right up to the to the uh, town, town uh, council, and then they get stuck with it, and then they get stuck with, well, yeah, it's, it doesn't make sense. If we're the ones that are the only ones that are stuck with the with the rulings for not. I haven't seen any appeals to city council. Just one. I know, but that, but that's because, yeah. but now with a new, with a new square, with a new radius, it, j it puts more pressure on the, on the, uh, on that, because the new radius is a totally different gig in terms of the, what, it, what it impacts in terms of what it does. I, I really felt that the conversation that um, s helped support the council decision to approve the appeal was based strictly on the potential risk factor of right. the tree. Right. Not on. It was never definite, according to John no. McClendon. Yeah, yeah. It's just so yeah. Nice. and they acknowledged yes. that. They, they didn't acknowledge that as well, but not design driven. Because there were a few comments made that, that you know, what can we do to try to bring that tree back up to health? Because it's sick yeah. now. There are things that we can do to, to, to bolster its health in the long term. Can you, you know, make your house go this way or that way around the tree? So that was um, certainly a, a point that was was being evaluated. Well, for me on that tree, that, that tree is probably the best example we could have had at that moment because the, for me on that tree, it had already been cabled and the recommendation was to cable it further. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. 
Okay, so that that to me was uh, that's where it, that was so close to the line for me. Yeah. Is that mm-hmm. is like if it's already been cabled and it hasn't gotten healthy, then it yeah. really you know. But I didn't have a criteria that yeah. would let me say you know after three cables you you can knock it down. <laughs> I thought it was very different than the issue tonight. Yeah. Right. yeah. That we considered tonight on the Sunday. I thought it'd be yeah. very different. Well, the, uh, yeah. so the, the so I but I think what it is is that. We've got to do, figure out how to get very consistently clear in a line, because what we will just drive developers nuts. We'll drive we'll drive the staff nuts, right. and we'll drive the, the town council nuts. That's with not being able to say what is our rule and what you know. Yeah, yeah we can't remember that she is much different than than how uh, Kevin was. Mm-hmm. Good. She is much more protective of. Oh yes, yeah, yeah. right. So this is a double whammy on us now. Like with Nancy earlier, I agreed with your comments on on the first on, on, on the first time tonight. I completely all of what you said. But yeah, we came to a different vote on it, yeah. more because I was looking at this thing saying our arms are made now, whether I like the look of the tree or not, which I didn't. It's just that it's it's to me it's are a safety really issue. Are tied by? Yeah, yeah that's, that's, this, is the, this is where it gets confusing. Yeah, you are. You're really right that tied. Right. You're tied to the required yeah. findings. Yeah. You're tied to the general plan. Right. And consistency is very, very important right. for so many reasons. And I think what you miss when you sit here is all the work that's happened before yeah. something right. made it here. Absolutely. Yeah. It's like when you look at cases that are litigated. I mean, there are 99% that never make it to court. Right. And so I think it's just like here where if a developer knows I better work with this arborist because if she recommends denial, there's a really solid chance planning commission isn't going to approve this. Right. And I think that really having that reputation out in the community creates predictability, mm-hmm. people yeah. design around it. And I think adhering, I, I'm a strict constructionist, I keep coming back to what does the general plan say? What, are, what does the ordinance say? What are the required findings? And if you just keep coming back to that, if something's broken, we need to change that, right. not the interpretation of right. it. Or you know, bad text makes bad law. You know, you might have a couple where you look at and you're like, God, that's a bit of a dog. But my hands are tied. Well then, you know, let's take a look at the tree removal ordinance and see if it's working or not. Mm -hmm. Well let's watch this tree we voted on tonight and see if that business of damage to the roots and the health of the tree because it was so close to the demolition. Let's see what comes of that. I know we've talked about other cases here in town Mm -hmm. where a year or two later the tree the tree just finally gradually died. Well, yeah, it'd be horrible if they moved their garage and did all this stuff. Yeah. Well, but the thing about it is, is we got also bounce the fact that, you know, oh darn, I hurt, I hurt the roots, you know. Uh, so, yeah. 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 You know that's, that's a real, that's a real deal. Very real concern. I mean, that, that backhoe was parked yeah. within within 20 feet yeah. of that, of that tree. Well, yeah. she's yeah. going to go there tomorrow, right? Yeah. 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 That's what she's saying. She needs to take a picture but, of it. But I mean, it was sitting there like, yeah. I'm ready to grab you out. I'm ready to grab you out. I got pictures of it going like, all right, well, you, you understand the, the issue, and uh, anything you need to help us or anything we yeah, need to help you. Can you add one more thing? So you should say that again, what you said, which is we are really, as a planning commission, we have a different mandate than the town council. The council can make their thing. They're, they're a different body than we are. Ours, ours is really, I mean, a staff report to me is what always drives me yep. generally, 90 yeah. something percent. But then also just what we all were, like you said, being consistent. Yeah. That's a hard one because I obviously felt for these guys yeah. on their, you know, hey, I'd love to see you balance that side. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah. Well, their design, their design, I, you know, if, if I've been on, the, on a, one of the other planning missions I went on, I would approve it like that. Yeah. You know, the design yeah. was absolutely perfect for, for that property yeah. and everything and the look of it and they, what it would have done for the neighborhood and everything else. But, you know, but when you have consistency and predictability, yes. you know yes. that you might want to get that removal right. permit before right. finalizing your right. decision because right. we're in Atherton. And right. architects know this. Right. Well, that's yeah. the only thing. So you could tell it. They even said it. Well, yeah. we did it. We did it. We did it. Sally yeah. told us they weren't too much Because if you start approving those, yeah. now you've got people right. to build into a corner. Right. And you're, you know. Well, and so we've had that happen uh, you know, years ago. Sure. Years ago, uh, we used to have that happen regularly. It's like, oh, shoot. I, I woke up and my plan needs to change. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know. yeah. So it's tricky. Okay. All right. Very good. Okay.